Okay, so here's the first step anytime that I'm about to frame stairs. I think I go and I measure my actual floor to floor height. So, so that's 119 and 1 8th. The plan says that I have 16 rises. I'm gonna divide that, that's seven and seven sixteenths, so that's good. Sometimes it's goofy. Uh, I think our max riser height is seven and three quarters. So seven and seven sixteenths, let me just write that down. Now I'm gonna hit store because that is rounded. So 16 rises, here's what I always do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, that's the bottom, so I'm gonna count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I got it right. I like to exaggerate because that is my upper floor. That's the rim. So according to the plan and the way that headroom and everything worked out is the platform height is number eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is the height of the platform. So I'm gonna draw a straight line through. I'm gonna exaggerate this platform. I can draw this. That's my lower set of stringers. But I also have another step on top of the landing when I turn the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So that's my second platform. Okay, does that make sense? Like there's nobody here with me, so who am I asking? <laughs> okay, so that means I should have seven on this, seven rises and treads on this set of stringers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's correct, this should be number, this should be six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So how do I figure out the height of this platform? I have my seven and seven stored, so times eight, remember? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number eight was the top, so 59 and 9 sixteenths. Now when I measure that, I'm gonna measure less the thickness of whatever material you're using on your platform. I'm using three-quarter Advantech, so I would subtract three-quarters since I got my calculator out. So 5813, that is the magic number for I'm gonna measure up, level around, snap lines, do whatever you need to do. I'm gonna build that platform first, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut all these stringers. Okay, so whenever I cut stairs, I prefer to use a pitch block. So I have seven and a half as my rise and 10 inches as my run. When you mark it out of a piece of scrap, cut on the wrong side of the line, so to speak, and that'll account for your pencil thickness. So here's how I like to do this. I just start on one end. If it's a short run of stairs, then I just line up the points, so to speak, where the rise meets the run. But if I have a long set of stairs, then what I actually do is I lay these all out mathematically, and that way I don't accumulate any error. This is a carpet grade stair. A little bit of error isn't going to hurt anything. I always put way too many marks because it just makes it easier for me to count. Now you'll notice that I have four two by 12 dug fur ganged together. You're gonna see how I'm gonna cut these. So here's how I always count. My platform is riser number eight. So that means I just need seven treads and seven risers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna mark the bottom all the way through. I just use a little scrap piece of two by material. This isn't rocket surgery. So three quarters of an inch. I tend to mark everything parallel since I know my pitch block is right on the money. And I'm just using this just to mark my three quarters. So that is my riser I'm subtracting. 
The reason is, is because I'm going to add that on top of all of the tread marks. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark all these points. What that's going to do is as I use the saw and I cut through these, make sure that that blade isn't wandering, you know, getting off. A little bit of blade wobble. If there is, I can always correct that. Always, always, always <laughs> quadruple check. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number eight is the platform. So I just line this two by four up and mark, and then I mark the other side. And the reason I do that is because I'm gonna use two by eight riser material. So if I add a riser onto this, see how our run, our tread just got inch and a half bigger? So to account for that, we subtract it off the back. So whatever your riser thickness is, subtracts off the back at the top. That means that this guy here is actually 10 minus inch and a half, so it's eight and a half. Since I'm cutting right here, <laughs> then I'm gonna add this, which means my eight and a half plus nine, uh, eight and a half plus inch and a half. Clear as mud. <laughs> Now here at the bottom, what I do is I take that same two by four, I mark all the way through. Here was my mark, right? Let's do this right. So here's my pitch block. That's why I always mark more than I need. Draw this straight through. Then I just mark three quarters parallel, draw a line. And the reason for that is because my riser material is three quarters. So if I didn't subtract this, but I add three quarters here, now instead of a seven and a half inch riser, I'm adding three quarters, which if, if my abacus is calibrated is eight and a quarter. So because I'm adding something here, I have to subtract that same amount off the bottom. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my 10 and a quarter inch Makita XGT saw with my favorite blade, the Diablo. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down through all of these, I'm gonna pop the top off, and then put the screws right back down through, all the way down. Then I will finish off my cuts with the jigsaw. I love this saw, watch how it plunges. So I'm able to cut three inches, about three and three quarters deep, which means the next one is about half scored. Beautiful. That is so nice. 
That is so nice. Oh man. Okay, so the top two are cut. What I'm gonna do is move them aside gingerly. Then I'm gonna fasten this right through the same hole. Everything is still in line. So yeah, six inch screw is a little much for three inches, but I'm not gonna go find another screw. Okay, I just want them to stay together. Okay, let's do the same thing. So what I should have done when I started was cut all of the treads all the way up because I have a better sight line for where the treads meet the risers because I don't want to overcut. I don't really think it's a big deal to overcut personally, but hey, it's YouTube. I want, to, I want you guys to think the best of me. Or Instagram, because all you people who I've never met, your approval is like so precious. I need to know that all those people that I've never met become cool. <laughs> Just kidding. I only care if my mom thinks I'm cool. GT, you are a beautiful machine. Now I'm going to quickly go through with the jigsaw and cut these at the same time. Okay, so what I want to do is mark these. This is number one. This is number two, three, and <laughs> they're screwed together, and four. Okay, so the reason I mark those in order is because the blade does wander slightly, but not very much. So I'll just put them in order, then the stairs plane really nicely. What I'm going to do is line back up. This time I'm not going to bother putting a screw in them. I'll just line them up. Call it good. They're identical snowflakes. Yeah, nice. Okay. Let's do it again. I should have turned up the orbital. It'll go a little faster.
building. I just hit 10,000 steps. Okay. By the way, that stuff makes great firewood. So, number one, what I'm going to do is set these up. Nope. So that's one, two, this is number three, and four. I'm trying not to stab myself with that guy. Okay, not bad, not bad. That is beautiful. Plenty good enough for a carpet there. So, what I want is I want this guy. I'm going to have to add pieces to the outside so that the drywall or skirt board can, can flop in. Flop in? Slide in. So, I try to keep these in order. All right. Yeah. See? This is why, I, this isn't the best way. I, this is just the way I like it. Come on. I'm gonna leave this in there, just so you guys know. I don't make any. Next time I'm gonna use the three inch screw. <laughs> Remember. As long as my mom thinks I'm cool. Okay, so. Like I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of stringers number two and three. So I'm going to go two by six or two by four on the outside of each of those. And that's going to allow me to put in my stringers or whatever. Okay. So really what it is, is like this. I'm gonna put a two by four and a two by four when they go up and slide in. I have room for drywall and or a skirt board. Okay. Grab them, take the line, that way they're not too long. No tape measure needed. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is just to make the finished carpenter's job a little easier. And the drywallers. I mean, 50% right, 60% of the time. Okay. Now, what I like to do, I really do prefer to use the pass load when I'm framing scares. That guy needs to adjust the depth. And I angle the nails, just so you don't tear your clothes when you drag these things in there. Yeah, that's good. So just angle the nails. Okay, so I think you're seeing the point. As I'm going, I'm feeling that with my hand to make sure that it's nice and flush. Hey, run to the knot. Okay, so now what's going to happen is that's the outside of the stringer, outside of the stringer. Now that's going to space this off of the wall, inch and a half. Drywall can slip down or a skirt board and everybody's happy. Okay, so 
Everything should be crowned toward me since that's where I'm cutting. I make the underside nice and smooth. The screws will kind of move it, so just know that's possible. is plenty acceptable. Okay, we'll run through this again just because, hey, who doesn't like a longer video? So, seven and a half inches, 10 inches, cut this perfect right triangle. I'm just gonna run through. See, I wanna use my Pika Dry. Some people get super precise with this. There's nothing wrong with that. I find that these stairs are gonna get wet. They're gonna get frozen. Then the sun's gonna come out like today. So I'm gonna do my best, but I'm also not gonna. Stairs can be like furniture, right? Furniture building, super tight tolerances. But since this is covered with carpet and pad, I don't have to take the time. Really, it's just not, there's no, uh, there's no return on being super, super tedious. It is framing after all. That doesn't mean though that you don't try to make it as accurate as possible. So remember, I'm going to come through here. I'm going to mark those points. That's just going to help me watch the line as I go with the saw. You know, it's going to wander a little bit. None of these saws are perfectly straight. Grain composite to fling. We use thin curved saw blades because we don't want to power these giant blades. It's a cordless saw. So it's like a balance between convenience and function. Okay, so at the top, remember I'm going to draw my line straight through. I guess I could have done it the intelligent way. So straight line through, mark inch and a half, put an X because I know I'm going to cut that off. Now this time I have six rises, seven is the platform. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think I'm counting that right. Let me do that again. If that's the platform, one, two, three, four, five, six. Number seven is my upper rim. Now this time I'm just going to straighten that right through. All this scrap is going to get used up for blocking. My treads are three quarters, so I'm marking a three quarter inch parallel line. Sometimes what I'll do, I just notice this, is if I go perfect, then maybe on this, the heel side, I'll go a sixteenth up. And that way I don't rock on the heel. And, and you'll see why that's okay when I put the stairs together. Okay. So one more time. I'm going to go X. So I have one. So platform. One, two, three, four, five, six. Number seven is the ram. You'd be shocked at how many times I've accidentally cut this one stringer short. Okay, let's go through this. I might close up these saw horses a little bit. So, like a moron, I put the screw way too far down. good at making mistakes. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this off. Just to get them out of my way. And I'm going to pull these saw horses in as soon as I can. And that should be good. Here we go. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and preemptively get a new battery. 
I don't know. Yeah, it's at one. By the way, can we just say how impressive this saw is? You can hear I'm bringing it right up to its limit. I'm trying to back it off so that I let the blade and the motor do the work without really pushing. Slow down a little bit. Okay, we gotta, we gotta just take some video of that. Okay, I have to stop part way through. Look at that. So now you can see what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut, I cut through the top two and halfway through the third. Beautiful, nice job, Nikita XGT. Ah, <laughs> life is so good, life is so good. Okay, this time I'm gonna use First two stringers. Okay, I'm gonna use three inch this time. You know, fool me once, shame on me, fool me. Don't fool me, don't fool me again. I think they have that thing in other places. So what I'm doing, since these don't actually continue and touch each other, is I'm going right up and I'm eyeballing. So if I cut this tread line first, I can basically eyeball where those need to meet. Okay, so same thing. These were the bottom two, so this is number three. That's number four. That's number one. And that's number two. So now what I'm gonna do is pop the two screws out of this. And I'm gonna move these aside. That's for the upper set, which I will not get to today because it's Friday and I don't feel like staying here. Okay, so same holes and that kind of allows things to align, stay aligned. And you can see by how easy it went down in there that I didn't, didn't make a new hole. By the way, this Milwaukee re uh, recip jigsaw is awesome. And the Diablo blades, which I just bought at True Value. Uh, as you, as you may have, might have noticed, I'm a big fan of Diablo blades. Because it doesn't do any good to go through this whole thing and then have the blade wander. Here, let's try that. And maybe in the sun. Neighbors are probably wondering what is going on.
Nice. Okay, so I know I want number one, and the reason is, is I'm going to put a two by four on that side. I'm gonna put this one away and grab number four. What number is this? This is number two. That is number three. So again, I'm keeping them in order. Und and und vier. That's a, I, I used to know how to count to German. Count to 10 in German. Eins, zwei, drei. Vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. And that's it. Okay. I think it's all making sense. So I need spy two by fours, just to keep it bilingual, or dose, or two. And I'm trilingual. Again, we're keep. Oh, let's see. I know I'm doing that wrong. This is number four. So that would be to my far left, the way I have it. That is correct. So that means I need to do it this way. And number one would be on my far right. So it'd be one, two, three, and then number four. So these will flip up like that. I almost, I almost made another mistake, which is like embarrassing. Also, it means that I'm out of mistakes for this decade. Not too bad, 2022, I would have used up all my mistakes. It means I would have had to be perfect from here on out. As they say in France, impossible. Okay. I always end up with these saw horses a little too short. Story of my life. Remember, take the line. This audio can't come through. <laughs> By the way, have any of you noticed how uh, not one tool company, what would we say? Not one tool company centric. We have got everything out here. Okay, that guy's a hair long. So we're using pass load. Metabo HPT, <laughs> Milwaukee, Makita. There's a DeWalt that I'll use for ripping treads. I have a Makita blower. Now I need nails. Okay, this guy is nailed. Yeah, we are. Uh, some people would say brand agnostic, but one time I said that and then somebody got offended because I had a paid partnership with, I think it was actually Keen Utility. And I was like, yeah, that's a good point. I guess technically I'm not brand agnostic because I did have a sponsorship deal. What I meant, what I meant by that is I don't really care what the tool brand is. It's all about the right tool for the job. Okay, number four goes to my outside left. If I was facing. And number one. Okay, so the stringers are all cut. Now I'm gonna cut to length the, the um, treads. I'm not gonna show that because that's very tedious. But I will show the ripping guide as I cut the risers. So let me turn these off for now. What time is it? 3.10. Doggone it. Okay, so I'm gonna call it there because it's 3.10 on a Friday and I wanna make sure that I bring two by eight for my risers. So stay tuned. In the next half of this video, the weather is go not going to be quite as pretty. It's supposed to rain all weekend and then of course on Monday, so. Okay. But we had fun. We had fun while we could.